since the setback, you haven't had to deal with loss very much uh, in recent years. So I guess uh, what was the process in getting past that, or is it still burn at you a little bit? I didn't lose. <laughs> um, I watched the fight a few times, and you know, based off of judging criteria, I won the fight. Damage, octagon control, aggression, I won. But um, you know, judges seen it different. That's it. I don't take anything from the fight. I learned a lot from that fight. I really went. I really took it to see where my grappling was at. You know, against one of the best in the world, and I got to see where it's at. So. Yeah, that's it. Only up from here. Very nice. Well, you get the call regardless of the result either way. International Fight Week, pay-per-view main card. I mean, does that show something about the way the company feels about you and the confidence they have in you to put you in a position like that? I've been in this position a couple of times now, so it feels good. You know, the, the company's getting behind me, and, you know, I'm going to keep doing my job. Right. The matchup itself is supposed to happen before, one that excites you stylistically? Yeah, you know, um, Dan's a vet. Um, I've watched him for a long time. You know, it's going to be an honor to fight him. And, yeah, the style, the style uh, it excites me, you know. Uh, I expect him to stand up and bang, but, you know, in case it does get to some grappling exchanges, like, I'm, I'm going to be ready there. And, uh, you know, we're going to put some fireworks. It was 4th of July yesterday, so now we're going to put some fireworks on Saturday. Nice. Lastly, for me, on paper, it looks like an all-action fight, but it's a meaningful fight, too. I mean, you guys are both in the rankings right next to each other. So you thinking about where this puts you, you know, I know you just had the, the, the uh, controversial decision the last time out, but are you thinking about, hey, maybe I go top five after this, something along that? I'm definitely looking towards the top five after this one. Um, I think they just put somebody else in, in number 10. So I'm like, whatever, he can have it. I win this fight. I'm looking at top five. Whoever wants to let me in, let me in. Jalen, uh, right here. When the fight with Dan fell apart last time, you had said you weren't super keen on rebooking it. You'd rather go train with uh, his team in New Zealand because you like Izzy and stuff. Um, what was, you know, when it got offered, was any part of you like, damn, I don't really want to do this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, you know, but at the end of the day, it's just a business, you know, I got to go do my job. But yeah, man, I've, like I said, I've, I'll follow the city kickboxing, city kickboxing team for a while. Um, I watched Izzy before he even got into the UFC. You know, so, you know, it's all love. Like, I don't have any animosity or hate towards them. It's just, this is how business handles. Given that familiarity, I mean, do you see, like, stuff in Dan's game that that gym maybe implements in, like, all its fighters they've been able to pick up from the previous fights? No, I feel like they all have individual styles, you know. Um, I don't feel like it's, like, a gym that has one set style. I feel like Eugene does a good job of, like, um, amplifying each individual fighter's styles and, and yeah, I mean, they all have grit. They all, they're all tough. You know, they all come to fight. Jalen, uh, there's a video clip going around on the internet of some prank gone wrong with you on the strip. What exactly happened there? I wouldn't say it went wrong. I would have said it, it went exactly how it was supposed to go. What, act, what exactly happened there? Uh, he said something, and I, and I grabbed him. <laughs> and lucky it was fight week, or I probably would have threw some hands, but, you know, it's okay. Uh, I saw on your Instagram it looked like you did some training with Hamzat. How was that? Man, that was crazy. Hamzat's good. Hamzat is legit. I, uh, yeah, I learned a lot from that dude in the couple sessions we had. So he's a cool dude. He's a strong fighter, great grappling, good striking too. Like, I'm like, man, he's, he's dope. Hamzat's dope. So, yeah. Did you go out there specifically to train with him or did you just kind of cross paths? We just crossed paths. I didn't even think it was going to be there. Um, we already had booked the trip to go out there before the fight even got booked. And um, yeah, ended up seeing him, training with him a couple of times. Uh, that was it. We've always heard like these legends of him in camp, like just the intensity and the cardio that he brings. But what was it like to see that firsthand or just be on the other end of it when you're training? It was intense. <laughs> I wish I was uh, up a weight class so I could have endured a lot more, but that man did not stop. I was like, bro, like, he was shooting takedowns and strikes, and I'm like, bro, like, I, I had no time to think. I was like, dog, it was, it was wild. But it was fun, though, you know what I mean? Like, I haven't, I haven't been pushed or tested like that in the gym in years. Like, I didn't even think anybody could do that to me, you know, like, at that point, so at the point I'm at. But um, yeah, he did. He's strong. He has great grappling. He does not stop. He has cardio. I was like, it was fun. You know, I want to train with him a lot more. And uh, final one for me, Saturday is going to be Robbie Lawler's last fight, uh, and he's going to retire. I'm curious if you have any favorite memories or favorite fights of Robbie throughout his career. One of my favorite memories of Robbie is uh, my coaches were trying to get to, uh, I think, uh, 
what was it, the pre-fight weigh-in show or one of the weigh-in shows, well, some show, and he ended up giving them tickets. And I was like, oh, that's, that's really sweet of him. So that's one of my favorite memories of Robbie. And then I can't forget when he fought Carlos Condent because I trained with Carlos for that fight. And I thought Carlos won, but then looking back, I'm like, yeah, it, was just, it was still a close fight, you know. So that was it. Well, that that fight specifically, it seems like a lot of fighters always look at the Rory fight as the, their favorite fight, and not a lot of people bring up that Condit fight. Do you think it's just because the the like you said, you thought Condit won, that the result was a little controversial? There wasn't blood, there wasn't the gash, the image of that Rory fight that kind of overshadows that Condit fight. Um, it the reason why I feel like it, it's overlooked, like you're saying, is uh, you know, it's, it was volume versus damage. You know, volume versus big strikes, you know, so it goes hand in hand depending on how you look. But I trained with Carlos, you know, for that camp, so I was like, that's my boy. I wanted him to win. <laughs> hey, Jalen, um, you're 4-0 against fires from Australia and New Zealand. This is going to be, uh, you're looking to go 5-0. and You beat Dan Hooker, like, you're going to fight Robert Whitaker next? Like, like you're, you're, you're running out of options. Um, yeah, I am. After that, it's, it's done. We squash, we put it, put it down the hatchet. That's it, it's over. I mean, what, what's up? You just don't like Australia and New Zealand, or? Dude, it's so funny because it's not even like that, yo. Like, I grew up watching Steve Irwin. He was my favorite. Like, I've always wanted to go to Australia. Australia was the first international place I've been to. You know what I mean? Like, it just happened that way. Like, and it just keeps happening that way. It's just a business. It's a part of the journey. I don't... You know, I don't, I don't have any vendetta against nobody, like, you know. Awesome. Thanks, man. Thank you. Hey, Jalen, Jalen in the over here. Um, it, obviously, Dan's, you know, pretty big name as well. Like, do you feel like if you go out there and get a finish, this is really going to kind of propel you up the rankings just because of sort of na Dan's name value and who he's fought in the past? Ultimately, yes. That's exactly how I'm looking at this fight, you know. Um, he's ranked under me, so I don't feel like it's going to do much in terms of rankings. But, you know, if I go in there, do my job, get the finish, make it look spectacular, um, you know, people are going to be talking about me. They're going to speak my name a little bit more. I'm going to put more butts in the seats. And, you know, it's going to help me knock on that top five door. You mentioned the fight with Gamrod. Did you find that you gain, actually gained more fans from that fight? Because it seemed like there were a lot of people who felt like you should have got the nod in that one. Definitely. I got a lot of support after. I didn't expect. And... Um, you know, it, it meant the world to me. It, it meant a lot, and it, it really uh, kept me upright in, in this fight game, you know, because I, I, I got real down about that one. But, you know, I just bounced back real quick, you know, seeing all the love and seeing how controversial. Honestly, I was so mad I didn't finish that man, dude. I was so, like, even if I did win the fight, I would have been pissed that I messed up my finishing record, so... Um, well, I'll fight him again. I'll fight him again. I'll fight uh, him. Gamrot's teammate, Grant Dawson, got a big win last week. I don't know if you caught that. I know he's below you in the rankings, but would you want to fight him at some point just because they're teammates? I'll fight whoever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, my job is to fight. Like, I'm not... I mean, I, it, I'll fight him. I'll fight whoever. Like, y'all yeah. yeah, know this. Y'all already know, like... I feel like that's always a loaded question, you know? No, no, no. I was just curious because it seems like rankings-wise it would kind of make sense. Um, and just last one for me, you mentioned sort of the circumstances of getting to train with Chimaev. You guys were both there at the same time. Did you guys talk about training together again in the future or would it have to, the stars have to align again, so to speak? Yeah, we talked about training again. Um, I might go back out to Dubai, maybe August possibly. Um, you know, I just want to get this fight done and see how my body feels, see how everything goes. But yeah, definitely we're going to train again in the future for sure. Jalen in the back. Um, you had mentioned before that Anderson Silva is one of your favorite fighters, and he's getting inducted in the Hall of Fame for you. What, are, what was one of your favorite fights out of him, and what are your thoughts of him getting inducted? Dang, my favorite fight of his. There's a lot. I like a lot of his fights. Um, I love when he fought Danny Amaya, and I love when he fought Forrest Griffin. Um, I think that Forrest Griffin fight is really like iconic, you know, just how poised he was, how slick he looked, and yeah, I mean, I'm happy that he's getting inducted to the Hall of Fame. It's much deserved. Where's your tarantula collection at right now? It's at home in Cali. They, they don't let me bring them no more. They got scared. <laughs> how many do you have right now? Um, I think like 11. I got a communal setup, so I don't know how many is in that one, because a couple of them ate each other. So. Uh, <laughs> I think there's probably like seven in there, and then I got like another, like another seven or eight chilling. 
Talking about your last fight, you had mentioned that because of your loss, you had a reconnection with your faith. Speaking of that, what, how, or how has that benefited you now going into this fight? It's benefited me in so many ways, and I wouldn't even just look at it just as a fight alone, but like everything outside of my life. Um, you know, I I got back right with God, and I, I feel a lot more empowered. I feel a lot more at peace. I don't feel the stresses of life as much as I used to. You know, I just put a lot of the pressure on, on it, on Him, on the on God, and uh, you know, it feels good. You know, it's always like. A touchy subject because you know I started going down like such a dark path and you know drinking constantly and I stopped drinking last year and just started making changes in my life and then ultimately it just that last fight showed me a lot of blessings that I feel like I wouldn't have seen if I had won and you know I didn't even expect to talk about that right now I didn't think anybody was gonna ask me that question but yeah and, uh, yeah touches touches my heart a little bit and lastly, looking forward um, after this fight, you had talked about some other fighters. Would you entertain a rematch with Gamrot first, or are you looking of a higher seed in the rankings? Higher seed in the rankings, and if Gamrot gets up there, then we could run it back then. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Jalen, back here. What's up? What's up, man? Um, I asked this a little more for your reaction. Talking about Australia and New Zealand, what are your thoughts when Alex Volkanovsky says he's still interested in 155? I think he'd do great at 155. Um, if he stays up there, I mean, I'd like to fight him. It'd be fun. I respect the man. Like, there's not, man, see, like, yeah, see, y'all starting that again. See, loaded questions. See, <laughs> um, Man, yeah, if he stays at 55, I'm going to be at 55, you know. Like, it's inevitable if we cross paths, you know. If that's how the, the, the dice is rolled, then that's it. Kind of feels like it's meant to happen now, right? Nah, um, nah, 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 nah. I want to go, we, we, I want to go train with these dudes. We got to be cool. Yeah, never mind. I take, uh, I take back what I said. <laughs> We're going to be training partners. <laughs> uh, to talk back about it, you know, with the decision and everything, is it in the back of your mind, like, you know, I need to show the judges a little more or something? I'm not, I'm not going to the judges. I'm not going to the judges. <laughs> hey, thank you. That's it. No more judges. Yep. Hey, thank you and good luck. Jalen, yeah. just going off the, oh, sorry, just going off the back of that, um, how do you see the fight going down with Volkanovski and, and Rodriguez? Oh, man, I, I think either someone's going to finish early or it's going to be an amazing decision. There's no other way around it. Um, I want to see how Volkanovski's boxing and basics, uh, if that can nullify Yair, or if Yair can, you know, use his kicks for really good distance management and, you know, use that creativity, those spins, and uh, keep Volk on his toes and, you know, ultimately set up a, a finish from there. Or, you know, if it turns into uh, some grappling exchanges, I want to see how, how, how they do, how both of them do. Um, Yair got a nice uh, submission his last fight, so I'm excited to see. Like, they're both, they're both killers. General Lamar, uh, you said that the Damian Maya fight was one of your favorite Anderson. I have to ask why, because that's not historically a well. Because it's not, exactly. <laughs> he nullified Damian Maya's takedown so well, you know what I mean? And I just, I watched that fight so much. I was like, all right, how do you stop a wrestler? How do you stop these jujitsu jiu guys? Like, how do you stop people that are going to just take you down? And, you know, like everybody says it was boring. Like, yeah. But I learned so much. That's why I love that fight. Like early on, like when I was you know, still coming up in the game. So you didn't watch it live when it happened? I don't even remember, dude. I, I've, shoot, I don't even remember when the fight was, you know? Like 20, John was like 2011-ish? I didn't start training until 2013. <laughs> <laughs> I graduated in 2013. Jalen, back here. You made your UFC debut in 2018 on a big card in the Khabib McGregor. Flash forward to today, what do you think is your biggest takeaway you've, you've gotten ever since you started in the UFC? Patience. I mean, I'm no longer in a rush for anything. You know, I had injuries set me back. And, you know, I've had financial things set me back. And I, that's, I just learned how to not rush the process. You know, that's like the biggest blessing I've had. Like even taking that fight, like I should have just sat back and be like, no, nah, I'm not going to take this fight. Like why would I take this short notice fight? You know, I was deserving of more. Um, I deserved a training camp. You know what I mean? Like I've been thrown to the wolves in this organization 
you know, and now I'm, I'm, it's about to be my time to lead the pack. And uh, you're back in Vegas. It's the return of T-Mobile Turner, as it's going to be your fifth fight in a row at the T-Mobile Arena. What's your favorite thing about fighting here? Yeah, it's close to home. Quick drive, get the win, get the dub, go eat, go home, see my family, chill. That's it. Thank you. Vegas is my, uh, my home away from home now. Back, uh, back here, Drew, back left, Jill. I, this upcoming fight with Hooker, uh, you're minus 250 favorite. How's it feel to get, you know, at this point in your career, you're that big of a favorite over a legend like Dan Hooker? I mean, I like being the underdog because I like making people money. <laughs> but, I mean, bet big, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, on the kind of back of his question, you know, you, you've been fighting here in Vegas so many times in a row. Like, what do you enjoy about Vegas itself? What are your favorite things about Vegas? The heat. I love the heat. It's good for the weight cut. <laughs> Um, I like the atmosphere, you know, um, a lot of people get, get behind you in Vegas, you know what I mean? Like, I love that. And, um, you know, it's one of the fight capitals, you know what I mean? Like, everybody always envisions fighting in Vegas and Madison Square Garden. So, you know, I've been doing the latter, so I'm enjoying it.